I feel like everyone knows the feeling of brain fog. And if you've clicked on this video, you definitely understand what just like waking up one day and feeling like an absolute buffoon. Feeling like someone who you literally cannot have a conversation with anyone because your brain has just stopped working. And you're like trying to focus so hard, but you have this haze going on. That's a terrible feeling. And it plagues a lot of people. It plagued me for years. And honestly, I thought it was primarily due to the weed consumption. But once I stopped that, I still had the brain fog. And it was random. And honestly, it didn't really decrease in severity or frequency. I still had this brain fog. And so I, I got to thinking like, well, what is it about? How can I stop this? Like, Because I want to be able to optimize my daily life. I want to be able to focus on things. I don't want this brain fog. It's really impeding me. And so I am here to tell you my three tips, the, the tips that I have actually done myself and they have actually benefited me and like greatly. And here they are. If you take them and use them, cool. If not, cool. This is how I don't feel like a buffoon most days. So number one, reduce the amount of stimulation that you have right before and right after you wake up. So one hour before you go to bed and one hour after you wake up, don't have any stimulation. Your brain needs a period of time that it, it just like relaxes because if you don't have this your brain is going to constantly be stimulated and for this example think of your brain as an engine if your engine is constantly at high rpms if it's constantly being pushed to the max what's going to happen well it's eventually going to overheat and stop working until you get it fixed and Arguably, the same thing happens to your brain. You'll push it so much because you overstimulate your brain the entire day, and then you go to bed, and that's not enough time for it to really cool down. And then you wake up, and you immediately start overstimulating your brain again, and the RPMs go back up high. And you go through the entire day with high RPMs, constantly having input fed to your brain. And then you go to bed again and you wake up and then boom, all of a sudden your brain just feels like super slow. Like you can't use it. Like there's a haze gone over it. That's because your brain has like gone into a survival state. Like it's been pushed, it's overheated. And now it's like not functioning because it needs to cool down and it's going to cool down no matter what. And so that's where the brain fog comes in. And the worst part that you could do in this is instance is Continue to stimulate it. Continue to veg out because then it just gets worse. Uh, I know that from experience, trust. But the best thing I can do, or the best thing you can do, the best thing I did for myself, and this is why it's number one, is one hour before and one hour after you wake up, just don't have any stimulation. Like go through your normal nighttime routine. Like brush your teeth floss, wash your face, take a shower if you're a nighttime shower, and then go through your morning routine. Brush your teeth, floss, wash your face again if that's what you do. And if you're a morning time shower, shower then. And if you need to stimulate yourself, I'd recommend reading a book, something analog, something that's not gonna just be constant scrolling. Like don't, the worst thing you could do is before you go to bed, scroll on TikTok. And just feed, feed, feed your your mind. Your mind is supposed to be winding down then so you can get the adequate rest that your brain needs to cool off. And then in the morning, like don't just immediately feed your brain by scrolling or texting people. Because again, your brain needs time to like kind of prepare itself to slowly ramp back up and get to the day. Like you, you need the time to unwind from the day prior and you need the time to ready yourself for the day ahead. 
And so do this step. And like I said, if you need stimulation, read something like analog, read like a magazine, read like a book, a book ideally. And a great practice that you can add, I know I'm kind of getting long winded here, meditation. Just meditate. It brings you into the now. It's going to allow your mind to cool off a, a lot quicker. Okay, number two. I don't continue talking about that because meditation could go on for a long time. Number two. This is something that you're probably going to have to do for like a full week to actually feel the benefits. And if you're thinking, oh, no, it's a full week. Like, I don't know. Just do it. It's easy. Okay, it's just a week of your life. And what I want you to do is declutter your mind and what I mean by that is write down the things that you have to get done in the day and journal your thoughts doing this will declutter your subconscious because I know you know the feeling of being asked a question and having so much brain fog that you literally like your processing power is this slow uh, oh yeah then you give the answer I, I know you feel that because I 100% did, especially being a server, when I would have to interact with that many people, with that much volume of people, and I had brain fog, oh boy, that was like, that was a struggle. That was rough. And writing down my subconscious thoughts and things that I had to do really helped me declutter my mind. and. In today's society, with the overstimulation and with how much stuff that you have going on in your life in one day, like you're going to get out of here, mosquito. You're going to get confused. You're going to have so much clutter in your brain that when you are asked a question, it's going to be like you're digging through all that clutter just to find the answer, just to remember the answer. That is rough. That is difficult. That is not fun to deal with. And so writing down what you need to get done for the day, what your goals are, and your, your simple goals, like taking out the trash, like replying to an email. Like these goals are the ones that you need to write down. So writing down the super large goals, they, they are good, but they're more for like planning. Like you sit down and you plan for the future. Those are the large goals because if you write down like today, I'm going to like send this many, like I'm, I'm gonna send a hundred emails, blah, blah, blah. Like dude, ramp up to that because honestly, just jumping into the deep end is going to make your life a living hell and it's going to demoralize you and make it so that you don't build up any momentum. So, <clears throat> wow. uh, so write down the small goals that you know that you're going to get done for the day but put them on paper so you're no longer having to remember them. And then if you have any appointments for the day, if you have like a hangout with the homie or a date with the girl, write them down, write down the time and the place that you'll be meeting up with them and just get it out of your mind and constantly refer back to that. I carry a, do I have it out here? No, I, I don't have it out here with me, but I carry like a little journal. It's like a little, uh, I think the dimensions are, 3.5 by 5.5, uh, so or 5.5 by 3.5, super small journal, and I just write down what I need to get done for the day, and what my appointments are, and I just carry that with me wherever I go. And if I have like a thought throughout the day, so that I don't have to continue thinking about it until like I get home and I can then ruminate it on it more. I write it down and so I don't have to continue thinking about it. Like it's no longer something that just gets lost in the clutter of my mind. Trust me, try this, but you have to do it for like a week to actually get the benefits. So if you can do it, I recommend it highly. And now number three, and this one's a little interesting. It's more along the lines of like what you could do for your health to really benefit your cognitive function. Number one, and this is a two-parter. Number one, drink at least minimum 64 ounces of water a day. And the way I want you to think about this is you are 70% water. Water flows, right? If you want your brain to flow without any dams, drink more water. Water is going to make you feel like the, the, the negatives of being dehydrated is dizzy, fatigued, uh, confusion, 
like these these are the negatives and the opposite will occur if you are hydrated you will be sharp you will be focused you won't be like full of anxiety you will be able to flow and function properly right this is what you want this is what we need this is why you have clicked on the video part two to this and actually the it, it's interesting the the main symptoms of dehydration are actually nowadays commonly attributed to this uh, it's like a, a newer thing because uh, I'm just gonna get to it sodium salt we need salt when I was growing up my parents were always like oh too much salt you have too much salt in your diet like you're gonna be dehydrated like don't do that like don't eat that much salt it will make you dehydrated nowadays the studies are actually showing that sodium deficiency is the first thing that you experience when you are dehydrated. It's like the first, the, the negative effects are what you associate dehydration with. So maybe you're not even dehydrated. Maybe you're just deficient in, in sodium. And so as you should be getting a minimum 64 ounces of water per day, you should also be receiving minimum 2,300 milligrams of salt, sodium per day. Okay, so track your water. That's an easy one to do. If you are still feeling the brain fog and you know that it's more biological, and you look, your brain isn't processing speed, like the, the processing speed of your brain is not performing great, then it's probably sodium because sodium ions, the function in your brain is literally like they, they are the precursor to your neuron firing. Like they are essential to the neurons working in the function that they work. They are essential to your brain working properly. And so if you don't have enough sodium, then your brain is going to feel lethargic. You will feel mentally slow, like your processing speed is dramatically dampened. And so drink minimum 64 ounces of water. And if you are still feeling this way, have some salt, put like a dime sized amount in your in the palm of your hand, put it in some water and drink that I literally promise you, you will feel better immediately, like immediately. It's crazy. And if you are working out or you're in the sun where you are sweating a lot, your salt or your, your sweat is salty, right? First off, you're losing water and you are losing salt. Make sure you get more than the minimum average amount of 64 ounces and 2,300 milligrams of salt. Make sure you're getting more than that because you're losing a lot throughout the day as well. So you need to be able to replenish those, the, those, uh, stockpiles to say the least so those are my three tips if this has helped you in any way cool i i recommend that you try them out because they have genuinely helped me clear so much of my brain fog it's like the sun has just really peeked through uh if you need help with anything i do want to mention that my email is down below if you want help or guidance, kind of breaking an addiction, kind of figuring out where you should put your focus in life right now to building momentum towards a habit that you know that you need to do, please reach out to my email. It's there for you to use and it is free. So why not use it? Who knows? Maybe the information that I give you will change your life. I don't know. Use it. Let's make this a mutual relationship. Water your roots and grow tall, my friend.